Hello Scapers, my name is Kadios, and thanks so much for clicking on the video. This video is going to cover 7 useful NPCs that you can meet as a regular free to play player or as an Iron Man player. Before we get into it, make sure that you have, if you haven't already done so, hit the like button and turn it from gray to blue, hit the subscribe button and change it from red to gray, and I also want you guys to know that I do have a Discord server that anyone is more than welcome to join. The link will be in the description below. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off our list first, we have Duke Horatio. Duke Horatio is the figurehead of Lumbridge and its surrounding areas. He's located on the second floor of Lumbridge Castle and is the starting point for the Rune Mysteries quest as well as the 2021 birthday event. The Duke is very useful for free to play Iron Man for the fact that he can give you an unlimited supply of air talismans, provided you haven't progressed at all in the Rune Mysteries quest. All of the talismans, regardless of their type, are very hard to come by in free to play, and require killing a lot of creatures for the chance to get just one talisman, or require multiple vault runs and camdozel, which uses up baronite shards for the chance to get a talisman at random. These air talismans can be hoarded in mass, which allows for an incredible way to train runecrafting passively as a free-to-play player whilst completing tiara crafting runs. In addition, Duke Horatio gives a second unlimited supply of an item, that being the Anti-Dragon Shield during the Dragon Slayer 1 quest. The Anti-Dragon Shield is useful for defeating Elvarg at the end of the quest if one decides not to flinch her. While Jagex has not confirmed where the Duke gets an unlimited supply of Air Talisman and Anti-Dragon Shields from, we're only able to speculate. Moving along to the second NPC on our list is none other than Murky Matt Runes. Murky Matt resides at the southeastern corner of the Grand Exchange in northwestern Varrock. Murky Matt is primarily noted for two main aspects in free to play. Firstly, Matt is able to tell you the current market prices of all rune types in the Grand Exchange. Though this perk is not used too terribly often, it is a good way to see all of the rune prices at once without having to constantly search up each and every rune individually on the Grand Exchange itself. The second and more notable feature that Murky Matt provides in free to play is the ability to enchant ruby rings into rings of forging. Rings of Forging are an incredible item to have in free to play, as it allows the wearer to have a 100% chance to smelt an iron bar from a piece of iron ore when smelted in a furnace, compared to the typical 50% smelt rate without it. Rings of Forging are essential to free to play Iron Man for smithing training as it cuts the amount of iron ore needed to mine in half, saving hundreds of hours of playtime if that player is looking to train their smithing to level 99, or even if that player is looking to max in free to play. It does cost 250 GP for each ring to be enchanted, though the cost is well worth it in free to play for regular and Iron Man players alike. Do take note that the Ring of Forging is good for 140 uses before it ultimately crumbles into dust. Our third NPC on the list is none other than the Apothecary, or as I like to call him, Old School Runescape's version of Bob Ross. He's located in southwestern Varrock and is your one-stop shop for anything potions related as a free-to-play runescaper. He can make you strength potion fours by bringing him one limper root, one red spider's eggs, and five GP. These strength potions are useful for regular and free-to-play Iron Man during combat training and are the most potent when used at very high combat levels. I'm talking levels over 95 in attack, strength, and defense. He can also make energy restore four potions by giving him two limper roots and a chocolate dust. These are also a good choice as they're used when smelting iron plate bodies or doing crafting runs in order to gain run energy back. Being able to run for a longer period of time is great for getting XP gains, in particular for those grinds, when your Clan Wars teleport is on cooldown. Bob Ross, I mean the Apothecary, can also make Anti-Poison 4 potions in free to play as well by giving him a Limper Root, Kadava Berries, and 5 GP. Though these are seldom made, as there are few creatures, if any, in free to play that cause poison. The Apothecary also plays a role in the Romeo and Juliet quest by making the Kadava potion in the storyline, so in a way, he has a hand in helping you get 5 easy quest points. Our fourth NPC on the list is none other than Solston. 
Solston is a dead adventurer who was slain and now resides eternally in the last level of the Stronghold of Security in the center room. His corpse is also the one seen when first entering the Stronghold of Security. He's useful in helping new free-to-play runescapers set up two-factor authentication on their accounts to provide additional safety from hackers, fishers, and the like. Once the player has two-factor authentication on their account, they can show him a pair of fancy or fighting boots. Doing this will allow Solston to imbue a Skull Scepter, which allows the player to use all teleports in the Scepter without the Scepter crumbling to dust once all of the teleports are used up. This saves the player a lot of time in that they don't need to kill the four different creatures which drop the different Skull Scepter pieces over and over again every time they want a new Scepter. The imbued Skull Scepter is critical for late game runecrafting training for free to play Iron Man in that it's the closest available teleport to the body altar. There's a lot of discussion regarding the Skull Scepter and it possibly being implemented to auto cast the Crumble Undead spell in free to play. I just want to also note before moving on that according to the wiki, Solston when spelled in reverse, Nutzlos, is German for useless. This I personally couldn't disagree more with. Moving on to NPC number 5, we have Karim. Karim runs his own kebab shop and is located between the bank and the furnace in northwestern Al Karid. Karim is known for only one use in the game, and that's for selling his Jelenor famous kebabs. He sells them for 1 GP each, and it only takes a few seconds to receive one of them after going through his dialogue. Filling up an inventory and banking hundreds of thousands of kebabs is easily doable for next to no GP whatsoever. The kebabs are a great food source for early, mid, and late game free to play runescapers, whether regular or ironmen. The kebabs can heal different amounts depending on the player's HP level. Upon eating a kebab, there's a 66% chance it'll heal 10% of that player's HP level rounded down. So for example, if a player has 87 HP, it would heal 8 points of damage. The kebab also has a 21% chance to heal 10 to 20 hit points flat, it has a 9% chance to not heal anything, and it has a small chance to lower a non-combat skill by 3 points. Finally, the kebab has a 4% chance to heal 30 points of damage and buff your attack, strength, and defense by 1-3 to three levels. Whenever I've needed to train melee combat stats, they've always been my go-to food source as it saves me time by not needing to fish and cook. I personally will be using kebabs as my food source on Tiffany here, most likely the whole duration for her 99 melee grind. Useful NPC number 6 is going to be Aubrey. Aubrey is notable for a few different aspects and resides at his rune store in southeastern Varak. He sells every free to play rune except nature, cosmic, and law runes, and he's known for selling packs of runes. Aubrey is a great way for free to play Ironmen especially to get all of the runes that they need rather than having to runecraft them all on their own. Aubrey also plays a major role in the Rune Mysteries quest, and upon completion of the quest, allows the player to teleport to the rune essence mines. Although Wizard Sedridor in the Wizard's Tower also can teleport a player to the rune essence mines, because Aubury is so close to a bank, he's the better option of the two. If a free to play player has already progressed in the rune mysteries quest and no longer can do the air talisman drop trick with Duke Horatio, then mining the rune essence from Aubury's rune essence mines is a good alternative. Mining rune essence from Aubrey's rune essence mines is one of the only other ways besides golem cores that a free to play player can do to get the materials that they need in order to even train up their runecrafting skill. The last useful NPC I'll be mentioning on the list is Harris. Harris is located on the western side of Corsair Cove at the resource area. If a player has the Dragon Slayer 1 quest completed, they can speak with Harris who will let them enter the resource area. With this unlock, a free-to-play player can utilize the dock to fish lobsters, tuna, and swordfish while being in semi-close proximity to the bank on the eastern side of Corsair Cove. This resource area also has yew trees and the only spot in Gielinor where free-to-play players can access the maple trees. What's even better than this is the entry to the Western Ogres Dungeon, more specifically the Gold Bar Room. 
This gold bar room has a couple ogres warriors and ogre shamans in the same area with many notable safe spots, making them the best place for a free to play runescaper to range them safely and efficiently. It's especially nice as there are a few bots here since most of them do not ever complete the Dragon Slayer 1 quest. I personally use this gold bar room when I trained Tiffany from levels 50 to 100 ranged and it was a nice feeling not having to compete with any bots on the world. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button and also become a subscriber of the Foxden by hitting that red button below. I also want to mention I do go live on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook Gaming every Tuesday and Thursday, so feel free to hop in and say hi. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya!